Airbnb business model could very well be the underlying cause for a potential burst of America's decade-long housing bubble. A potential stock market crash and a bond market pummeling have raised fears that a real estate crash could be next. What if this all traces back to Airbnb and the short-term rental craze? Could an Airbnb crash be the final domino to fall? Make sure to watch till the end where we'll explore how the Airbnb business model is capable of crashing the housing market and why we can't afford to ignore it any longer. Airbnb has made remarkable progress since its launch in 2007. The founders began by acquiring inflatable mattresses and letting people sleep on their apartment floor for a fee. But now, the platform shows an impressive 357 million nights booked globally last year. Have you ever stayed at an Airbnb? If you're unfamiliar with Airbnb, it's a marketplace where individuals can reserve overnight stays from hosts who offer private spaces. Airbnb revolutionized the concept of hospitality by allowing hosts to monetize their extra space and offer a more affordable option than expensive hotel bookings. Consequently, individuals began to invest in homes solely for the purpose of listing them on Airbnb, and these people raked in huge profits. To fully grasp why this trend has gained so much traction amongst investors, you have to recognize how profitable it is financially. On average, demand outstripped supply and landlords benefited from up to four times higher income through Airbnb than they would by leasing their property conventionally. To evaluate their real estate investments, most savvy real estate investors use a metric called cash on cash return. It's really quite straightforward. We'll demonstrate with an example featuring Paul, a hypothetical investor who has diligently saved up some funds and is now looking to invest them in property. Compare what he does to what you might face. Paul is ready to purchase a house for $100,000, but does not have the entire sum. Fortunately, a bank approves Paul's request for an $80,000 loan, representing 80% of the property value. Thus, he only needs $20,000 out of pocket and his investment property is now within reach. Suppose Paul leverages this property as a long-term rental. He agrees to a one-year contract with a tenant, allowing them to inhabit the house in return for monthly payments of $1,000, amounting to $12,000 over the course of that year. In other words, John can generate an income of $12,000 annually just from renting it out. Once Paul pays all the necessary bills, such as repairs on the house, lawn care, snow removal, and property taxes, along with his monthly loan payment for purchasing the property, there will still be $2,000 left over. This is what we refer to in real estate investing as cash flow. To measure Paul's cash on cash return, we need to divide the $2,000 in cash flow by the amount of money he invested. After crunching some numbers, it turns out his return is a solid 10%. But like any investor worth their salt, Paul desires an even higher return than that. Paul learned about the Airbnb business model and decided to give it a go. The results? He was able to earn three times more income, $36,000 instead of the typical $12,000 from renting out his house. Did you know that the shorter your stay at a property, the higher its per night rate? This is why it costs more to live in a hotel for an entire month than what you would pay for rent or mortgage. Paul capitalizes on this concept by renting out his place via short-term stays on Airbnb, thus allowing him to get much higher rent rates per night. After subtracting his expenses, Paul concluded that his Airbnb was yielding a cash flow of $20,000, providing him with an impressive 100% return on investment. This is far superior to the 10% cash on cash return he achieved from using the house as a long-term rental. It's easy to understand why people were so eager and incentivized to buy homes and list them on Airbnb over the past couple of years. Hosts made a fortune. With international travel restricted, folks jumped at the chance for short-term rentals. Thanks to the government's stimulus and record stock prices, Americans had more money in their pockets than ever before. As a result, they were eager to travel and willing to spend an exorbitant amount of it, which caused Airbnb hosts' wallets to swell with cash. Did you join the short-term rental craze? Additionally, this new wave of influencers dedicated themselves solely on teaching individuals how best to invest in short-term Airbnbs through YouTube tutorials and other social media posts. However, times are quickly changing. Warren Buffett famously quipped that what the wise man does in the beginning, the fool does in the end. We're seeing this come to fruition with short-term rental properties. Many who purchased houses for renting out on Airbnb only recently, within the last 12 to 18 months, and have little experience working with such platforms. Sadly, these individuals may face bankruptcy or force sales at a loss. Can you guess why? 
Over the last two years, we have seen an unprecedented boom in the real estate market. With interest rates hitting record lows, people were able to invest more into their mortgage payments and thus drive up house prices significantly. Unfortunately, this led to extreme competition for Airbnb investors who had to compete with potential home buyers with deeper pockets, something that remains true today. Short-term rental investors frequently outbid other buyers since they assumed that their high monthly payments could be covered by the profits gained from renting out their property. Plus, numerous of these folks obtain short-term rentals utilizing second mortgage loans. Most investment property buyers must provide a minimum down payment of 25%. Putting more money down results in less debt relative to its value. Therefore, it reduces the risk of defaulting on the loan. There is an indisputable correlation between size of one's initial payout and their ability to meet future payments. Because many people lack the funds for a 25% down payment, social media influences propagated vacation home loans with only 10% of the property's value needed as an initial deposit. These loan options were incredibly attractive and made it easier for aspiring investors to get onto the property ladder quickly and conveniently. However, this can be a dangerous situation for many of these short-term rental investors since they often possess an excessive amount of debt. The magnitude of your debt increases your chance to being unable to repay your loan in time. Can you see where this might go? To be fair, debt is frequently used in real estate investing and is advocated for in the right situations. There's no doubt that rental amounts of long-term housing spike each year. This is reassuring because you can anticipate the amount of money you will be getting from month to month and make sure it covers your loan payments. That'll give you peace of mind knowing those rents are covered. Nevertheless, profits from short-term rentals are anything but reliable. This volatility makes it much riskier to take on debt for the purchase of short-term rentals. This hasn't been an issue yet due to our thriving economy over the past couple of years with low unemployment and increased spending power among travelers eager to explore new destinations. Unfortunately, the economy is losing steam and many economists believe that the United States has either already entered a recession or will soon enough. During times of financial strife, what is one of the first activities people cease to do? Travel. Following a remarkable year of profits, many short-term rental investors quickly made the mistake of assuming that their success was normal and would remain consistent. Despite this, there is a concept known as mean reversion, which is a financial theory positing that asset prices and historical returns eventually revert to their long-term mean or average level. The travel industry has its share of highs and lows, so if you have a business dependent on debt, it could just take one low period for your operation to end abruptly. What would you do in this situation? Going back to Paul, the short-term rental owner from our previous example, let's explore how quickly he can find himself in an uncomfortable position as a result of his business. Suppose Paul spends a total of $3,000 per month to sustain his Airbnb, inclusive of monthly loan installments, property taxes, upkeep costs, and cleaning services. These expenses are essential in order for him to successfully manage his short-term rental business. Drawing from Paul's income and expenditures between January and June, we can accurately estimate the amount of money in his savings. His Airbnb has been doing exceptionally well. Each month it brings him more earnings and expenses. Therefore, the cash in his bank account is increasing steadily. By the end of June, Paul had a whopping $11,000 in his bank account thanks to his successful Airbnb short-term rental business. He was thrilled with these impressive results and couldn't believe how far he had come until things suddenly shifted for the worse. Can you guess what happens next? In July, Paul's income suddenly dropped and could no longer pay for his expenses. Whether due to the faltering economy preventing travelers from taking trips or negative reviews causing Airbnb to reduce its promotion of his listing, something had changed drastically. With every passing month, he watched as the money in his bank account dwindled away with little hope of improvement. In November, Paul's finances plummeted and he was left with only $500 in his account. After another unsuccessful month in December, his bank balance became negative. Thus, in order to make up the difference, Paul had no other choice than to dip into his personal savings from his day job. However, if Paul is unable to cover the negative amount in his personal savings, he may be forced into selling his house and facing bankruptcy and foreclosure. Could you recover from this situation? This is no longer just a hypothetical idea, it's already happening. Real estate agents are getting calls from short-term rental investors asking them to sell their homes. We can only imagine what this will look like as the trend continues and grows in popularity across the nation. Lately, even well-known tech and lifestyle YouTuber Shelby Church has experienced this issue. She recently posted a video where she went through month by month demonstrating how much revenue her California Airbnb was generating. Just like our hypothetical situation with Paul, the short-term rental wasn't bringing in enough money to cover expenses. 
Initially, her Airbnb was a lucrative source of income. However, it soon began to falter. Each month, the expenses were higher than what she earned through Airbnb and consequently, her bank balance kept dwindling. To make matters worse, huge repair bills for the property had to be paid, something every homeowner understands is an inevitable part of owning real estate. Shelby's fame as a YouTube star has provided her with an abundance of subscribers, 1.75 million in total, so she will have no difficulty covering that shortfall. But what if you're not in her position? What happens when you purchased five Airbnbs and left your job to manage them, only for all of them to start losing money? Your resources won't last long before being forced into selling off these investments. The influx of potential short-term rentals in the housing market has risks for home prices. To understand this, let's explore how the price for a house is determined by supply and demand. With a thriving economy, record low interest rates, and a combination of rising demand and decreasing supply, people had the resources to purchase houses. This led to an increase in prices as there weren't many homes available on the market for sale. We are beginning to witness this process reversing. Demand is decreasing as interest rates have significantly increased, making housing costs today reach their highest level within two decades. Although the current economic climate would suggest that home prices should be declining significantly, this is not necessarily true. This can largely be attributed to an imbalance in the supply of homes on the market, which helps keep home values from plummeting dramatically. Despite all of these factors at play, prices are only experiencing a modest decrease, if any, across many markets. Was your market impacted by these changes? If a wave of houses currently being used as short-term rentals were to flood the market, things could be drastically different. According to AirDNA, a well-recognized source for short-term rental data, the U.S. contains 1.06 million short-term rental properties. In comparison, March of 2022 saw 355,000 housing units up for sale when America was gripped by its own real estate frenzy. If one-third of the current number of short-term rentals are either willingly or involuntarily put up for sale, then that means a dramatic influx in housing supply. We could see more than double March numbers just from vacated short-term accommodations. This could put a significant strain on U.S. house prices. Returning to our example with Paul, but before we do, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more like this one. When he purchased a short-term rental property, he put down 10% of the home's purchase price and received a loan for the remaining amount. Let's say that when he bought it, this house was valued at $500,000 while Paul still owes $450,000 on it. But what happens if the house's value suddenly drops 20%, making it worth only $400,000? Well, in this case, Paul is left owing an additional $50,000 more than his current asset's worth. Paul is in a state of being underwater on his loan, owing more than the value of the asset. This means that if Paul has to sell his rental property because it is losing money, he would still owe $50,000 on the loan. It's essential to recognize that real estate is localized, meaning the trends in each market are exclusive. Some markets have a greater proportion of short-term rentals than others and will likely be affected more strongly if there's an influx of bankruptcies due to these rentals. The results of this possible crisis could be good or bad, depending on which side of the coin you're on. But it stands to be said that you'd surely lose out if you don't continue watching more of our videos.